Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It was a mistake. That was our fault, and we apologize for our mistake. Uh, uh, in your GPS, right, in GPS track, it is completely that you have penetrated to Iran territorial water? I believe so. How was the Iranian behavior with you? The Iranian behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. Uh, didn't have a special problem? We had no problem, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you're witnessing the destruction of the United States military by the greatest enemy of our freedom. It's somebody inside the Obama administration did this to the U.S. Navy. Let me tell you something. I'm a boater. Two very advanced American naval craft suddenly stop in the middle of the Gulf and go aground at the same time. And our good friends in Iran, the good friends of John Kerry, rescue our sailors after doing what why they took all of our latest technology let me tell you something and remember it carefully there is a double agent inside this administration in my estimation they did it to us with one of our most advanced drones two years ago you have forgotten that already because you have no press you only have a few men left in the media you only have a few websites left to look at Somebody in the administration sent them our most advanced drone two years ago. It landed without a scratch, like a new Buick in a showroom, delivered on a silver platter to the Iranians, our most advanced drone. You forgot that? Under that smiling puppet on the stage last night. That lying, smiling cafe singer getting away with murder and treason. I couldn't watch him. The self-congratulatory speech that he gave was in another universe. It came from somewhere else. He was living in an alternate universe. He was talking about a world that doesn't exist. And the sycophants in the Republican Party couldn't get enough of applause. Oh, I accept it from the Pelosi's and the other fetid creatures from the jungle floor. I accepted it. I can smell their stink coming through the TV screen. I accept it from the Democrat Socialists. But I couldn't believe watching the Republicans applauding. He walked down the aisle smiling like he was on a red carpet in Hollywood. The world is burning around him. And this double agent tells us the world is perfect. All I could think of was it was Joseph Stalin when he was confronted with boys being raped on a railroad track in the 1950s. And the Russian detective says the boys are being raped. Look at their bodies. And Stalin is, tells the commander to say there is no homicide in paradise. It only happens in a capitalist nation. I was watching that last night during the State of the Union speech, where he delivered a speech about a paradise that doesn't exist. He is an exact copy of every other mad dictator the world has ever seen, short of the genocide. The only genocide that is being committed is against Christians because he won't lift a finger to protect them. So don't assume there is no genocide. There is a genocide going on against Christians in the Middle East, and there's fraud! Doesn't even talk about it. He tells us that the Iranians are our friend. They're our great friend. And so somebody in the Obama administration, in my opinion, if I were in counterintelligence, and I know there are people in counterintelligence who are thinking exactly the way I am thinking, but they're lower-level counterintelligence. They're not heard from. By the time their suggestion goes to one level above them, the dunce above them has been told to kill it. Somebody did this to these boats. Did you see the naval men humiliated? Did you see them bowing down to the Iranian murderers? And did you see them, them saying how good they were treated in a prison camp? Do you know that behavior like this in another time would have been considered sedition? They might have been court-martialed when they came back, tried and executed for catering to the enemy. Did you know that? Are you aware of what just happened? And it happened on the very day that the fraud gave the big smiling speech, the big smiling Obama, glad-handing on his down on the runway. 
I don't understand where America went. It went up in smoke. This is not a right-wing view. This is the correct view. This is the correct view. How can anyone listening to this show not understand what just happened to this military under this fraud? I ask myself, two boats suddenly conk out and go aground, uh, and they're rescued by Iran. The nine men and one woman were detained by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards on Farsi Island. How did this happen? The unnamed sailor said it was a mistake. It was our fault, and we apologize for our mistake. Can anyone explain to me how these boats died out and went aground? They're the most advanced naval river craft imaginable. How did they die out? Anyone listening to this show who is a boater knows that this was a sabotage. These boats don't conk out. You know, it's interesting to me. In my last novel in the Jack Hatfield series called, um, I believe it was called Countdown to Mecca, right? The scene opens with a U.S. military helicopter suddenly plummeting to earth, earth in Afghanistan because a Chinese controller had the chip and he had a, a device where he could stop the rotors from turning. Defuse the helicopter, the helicopter crashed. A few scenes later in my novel, an FBI car is pursuing the bad guys in San Francisco. The police car stops in the street because a bad guy has a device that he presses a, a few keys and it stops the computers from operating in the police car. My guess is somebody gave the codes to the Iranians. They jammed the boats, computer systems. The computer systems stopped the boats. They went aground. They were given on a silver platter to the Iranians. Our advanced technology in this regard was given to the Iranians just as it was with the drones. And then we see the apology. And then we hear John Kerry congratulating himself for his great relationships his great relationships with the terrorists in Iran, and nobody in the media sees the bigger picture. And then we saw a speech last night where Obama talked about ISIS in a parallel universe. I happened to be at dinner. I tried not to watch the speech. When they replayed him talking about ISIS, I cursed him in the bar. I couldn't take it. I had a few drinks. I cursed him in the bar, and I left. Three guys offered to buy me a drink. Listen to your president lying about ISIS last night. As we focus on destroying ISIS, over the top claims that this is World War III just play into their hands. Masses of fighters on the back of pickup trucks, twisted souls plotting in apartments or garages, they pose an enormous danger to civilians. They have to be stopped, but they do not threaten our national existence. That, that what? is the story ISIL wants to tell. That's the kind of propaganda they use to recruit. We don't need to build them up to show that we're serious. And we sure don't need to push away vital allies in this fight by echoing the lie that ISIL is somehow representative of one of the world's largest religions. He won't even mention the word Islam. We just need this to call them insane. what they are. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. He's insane. He's insane or he is an absolute enemy of the, of the Republic. There's no other conclusion. Either he's living in a delusional world or he's a double agent. There's no other explanation for making a speech like that at a time like this. He denied what happened in San Bernardino. He denied what happened in Boston. He denied what happened to the cop in Philadelphia the, the other day. He denies the number of ISIL-related events, ISIS-related events. He disconnects it from Islam. They all say they're Islamic. If this is not the work of a propagandist for the enemy, tell me what could be the work of a propagandist for the enemy. And then to see the men on their hands and knees apologizing to these beasts in Iran, and to see Kerry thanking Iran for returning the troops that they delivered on a silver platter. There's something so wrong with the country under this delusional sociopath in the White House. And I ask myself when I say things like this on a national show, will I be understood or will I be misunderstood? Can those brainwashed fools on the liberal side ever comprehend that they have been had? 
and that their life is being put in danger by this administration that they seem to worship so much. Did we play, did we play Kerry yet? Talking about the wonders of Iran? Listen to John Kerry thanking Iran for returning the U.S. naval personnel who were delivered to them on a silver platter. Listen. I want to underscore how pleased I am that our sailors uh, were safely returned into United States hands this morning. Um, as a Public former Black sailor Black. myself, as a, oh, yeah, uh, I know as well sailor. as anybody. Uh, I can't uh, listen to I'm sorry. I don't want to say things that I really mean right now. I want to hold back a little bit because the whole picture is distorted. It's really bad. If you care to comment upon anything that you just heard on this show, if you work in counterintelligence and can use a scrambler, leave your office, call the show, put a handkerchief over the mouthpiece, and you tell me I'm crazy. I have never heard of two fast attack riverine boats conking out at the same time in the history of the U.S. military. I'm a boater. It's impossible. It is statistically impossible unless these boats were either sabotaged on the mothership from which they were launched or the Iranians were given the codes to the computers on these boats to stop the boats dead in their tracks off of Farsi Island. Back in a minute. It was a mistake. That was our fault. And we apologize for our mistake. Uh, in your GPS, right, in GPS track, it is completely that you have penetrated to Iran territorial water? I believe so. How was the Iranian behavior with you? The Iranian behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. Uh, didn't you have a special problem? We had no problem, sir. This is the most humiliating moment in my lifetime, as an outsider, as a civilian watching the U.S. military, I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. It reminded me of the propaganda films from uh, the Korean War when the communists would capture soldiers and torture them. The same voice. You are well treated by us. You had problem. Like Hitler's Germany. And Kerry gets up and thanks them in his double-talking silk suit with his silk tongue and his silk mouth and his silk brain. And no one in the media says anything. No one's asking three questions. One, did they go aground because an EMP weapon disabled the naval boats? Did they go aground because they were off course? How could a naval boat go off course when you have all these sailors who are so skilled at driving these things? I, as a small craft boater, have never, well, I went aground once because I had no chart going into a harbor. It can happen to a civilian. It's impossible to believe it would happen to two boats at once. It's impossible to believe that unless they were given the wrong charts for the area or somebody screwed with their GPS. There's no other way this could have happened. Who is the commander of the mothership who let this happen? And he's the one responsible, or shall I say she is responsible? What mothership did these fast patrol boats come from who launched them who's the captain of that he's responsible for this am i right of course i'm right i understand that the boat is a fast assault craft the boats are stridsbot 90 combat boat refers to the year of acceptance and i don't have to read you all these details it was originally developed by the swedish navy interesting swedish navy the cb90 is known as a very fast and agile boat, can turn very quickly, can decelerate from top speed to a full stop in 2.5 boat lengths. Very interesting. Lightweight, very shallow draft, which means it can go into shallow water. It runs off a jet engine, meaning twin water jets, can run up to speeds of uh, 40 knots, 74 kilometers an hour, in shallow coastal waters. So how did this happen? How does a boat of this advanced nature wind up going aground in a, on an Iranian island in a Gulf. How is this even possible? What ship did it come off? What ship was it launched from? They don't launch out of...